Hi everybody, good morning, welcome to your mats. My name is Megan, I'll be guiding you through a one hour power flow class. You'll need two blocks for today's class and if you don't have blocks, that's okay. I want you to grab something tall, maybe water bottles or something like that, um, that will help the floor seem a little bit closer for some of our funky forward folds that we'll be doing today. So go ahead and grab two props of your choice. I did make a playlist for you today. So if you wanna head over to Spotify, my username is Megan of the Moon. It's M-E-G-A-N of the Moon. You just type that into the search bar and you'll see my list of playlists come up. They're all public. And the one we'll be using today is called Online Yoga Party. So go ahead and get set up on your mat. I'm a little bit early here, so I'm gonna give you just a minute to set up and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right. We're gonna get started in a seat today, starting our playlist now. And you're gonna come into a seat, seat of your choice. Anything that feels good here. Maybe a cross-legged seat, maybe a seat on your mat. Whatever you need. Start to get comfortable, bring your hands to your knees, palms facing up, and close your eyes. We're gonna get into a bunch of different variations of figure four today. So from the very easiest beginner variations to some really super advanced inversions. It's an all levels class, so don't be, don't be worried. We'll get into a little bit of everything and there'll be lots of modifiers. So it's gonna require a lot of hips, a lot of core, a lot of balance. So close your eyes and start to tap into these areas. Take a nice slow inhale, fill up. Open up, exhale, let it go. Again, like that, nice slow inhale, starting to fill up your lungs. With your exhales, releasing any lingering tension, any lingering worries, thoughts of the day, anything that's not going to serve you in this next hour, let it pass, let it go with your breath. Come into this yogic space, this meditative space, this space where we're going to work on our body, our mind, our spirits, on our connection of the three. And start to set an intention for class. This can be anything. This can be something physical, pushing yourself to your edge, really just sending it, just going for the poses. Or it can be something more internal. It can be about positive reinforcement. It can be about the way you talk to yourself in your head. It can be about that internal dialogue. It could be something spiritual. We create all this energy, we write, raise all this energy in class, so maybe you want to dedicate it to someone else who needs it. Whatever your intention may be, hold it with you here. Maybe set a word for it and use that word as your mantra throughout class, repeating that word to remind you why you're here on your stage. We'll take another breath like that. Nice slow inhale, fill up. Big exhale release. Now keeping your eyes closed, flip over your hands so you're grabbing onto your knees. Sit up nice and tall and just find some neck rolls, rolling your neck over in one direction. And rolling it over in the other direction. And then take a few moments here just to warm up your spine, maybe some cat cows. So keeping our eyes closed here so we get rid of the visual distractions, we can really go inside. Feel what is loose, what is tight, what is stiff, what needs a little bit of extra love. Finding any movement that feels good here. Starting to warm up the spine. Last couple breaths. And then draw your hands to heart center. 
Bring your arms up overhead, palms come together to touch. Take a big inhale. Open up, exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, open your eyes. Bring your hands behind you. You should be at the center of your mat, actually, not the back. Knees are going to come up, feet plant on the floor. Cross your right ankle over your left knee for your figure four. If you need to slide your left foot out down the mat a little bit, you can. Your hips are feeling tight. And then we're just going to start to rock left and right. Getting some mobility going in the low back and the hips. Fingertips should be facing your body. Take one more. And then as your right foot heads towards the floor, this time let it come all the way to the floor and sit up tall. Cross your right knee over your left knee. Ground down with that right glute. Mine seems to be a little bit lifted right now, so make sure you ground it down. Right hand comes behind you. Inhale, left arm high, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Look over your right shoulder as you hook your arm, left arm, outside your right knee. Getting that beginning twist of the spine. Inhale, sit up tall. Exhale, take that twist a little bit deeper. Bringing out our internal organs, rinsing them out. Getting that detox going. Last breath here. And then bring that left arm back around, making our way back into our figure four. We're gonna come onto our backs. First figure four of class, first of many. Once you make your way onto your back, you're going to lift your left foot, slide your hands through the holes in your legs. Interlace your fingers behind your hamstring. Pull that leg into your body and draw your shoulders down to the mat. Chin is going to tuck slightly to your chest, so the full length of your spine is on the mat here. We're going to start to stretch out our glutes, our hip. Maybe you rock left and right if that feels good. Maybe just stay in that stillness and squeeze. Make sure your left heel is down by your glute. It's not straight up in the air. We'll get into the hamstring in a little bit here. But first we wanna work hips, glutes, maybe even a little bit of IT band. Often to stay right here if you feel like you can take it a little bit deeper. Maybe you interlace your fingers around your shin. Check the alignment. Can you have still have a proper figure four? Is your ankle crossed above your knee? Keep a slight flex in both toes. And if you did go for the shin, Draw those shoulders back down to the mat. They tend to lift here as you go deeper in the stretch. Again, maybe rocking left and right. That feels good. Maybe just staying where you are. One big squeeze. We're going to maintain our figure four, but you're going to release your leg. Send your left foot high. So now your left leg is up in the air, right leg is crossed. We're going to grab onto our calf, our ankle, our shin, whatever we can find, your foot. Now we're getting into the hamstring. Now we're drawing that leg back towards our body. And whatever you can grab for is good here. Taking it deeper into the hips and into the hands now. All right. From here, we're going to use momentum and core to rock and roll back and forth in this pose. Get some momentum, get some core, and we're going to roll all the way into a figure four forward fold. So try to use your core. When you rise up, try not to just flop down. Woo! Slow, slow. <laughs> it's not always super slow, but we're working on it. So coming straight into our forward fold, grabbing onto our foot. Draw your nose towards your knee. And if your foot is right on your knee, I want you to pull it back. I want you to avoid putting any pressure directly on your knee. So when I say cross your ankle over your knee, I actually mean above the knee, not right on it. Forward fold, only as deep as feels good, as feels okay. Listening to our bodies, making sure not to go so deep that we're feeling that um, pinching or that pain. Tension, discomfort is okay. But pinching, pain, we always want to avoid. Last couple breaths here. And inhale, rise up. Let's get into the other side. Uncross your ankle. This time set your left 
ankle above your right knee. Now, this side is a little bit tighter for me, so I'm gonna slide my right foot out a little bit. If that's the case for you, do the same. Again, we're rocking left and right. This is our first figure four. Get used to this position. We're doing lots of figure four stuff today. Your hips are gonna be happy tomorrow. Or sore, we'll see. Last, rock left and right. And then as your left foot comes down towards the floor, bring it all the way to the floor and sit up tall. Cross your left knee over your right knee. Draw that left glute down to the mat. Left hand behind your hip, inhale your right arm high. Exhale, twist, look over your right shoulder. Hook your right arm to the outside of your left knee. Inhale, sit up tall, find length. Exhale, twist it deep, rinse it out. Couple more breaths here. And start to unbind. Bring your hands back around to our figure four. And then we're gonna slowly lower onto our backs. Same thing as the other side. Lift your right foot, stand your hands with the holes in your legs, and release your fingers behind your hamstring. Make sure that right heel comes back down so you have a bent knee. Flex through both toes so we have some engagement here. Pull that leg in towards your body. I don't know about you guys, but this side feels way tighter for me. So maybe you stay behind the hamstring instead of going to the shin on this side. We don't have to find equal depth. We want to find equal sensation rather than depth. Draw those shoulders back to the mat. And then only if you're feeling comfortable and you can maintain proper alignment, you're gonna move your fingers around your shin. And if you do this, when I do this, my shoulders lift off the mat and my chin lifts high. So if that happens to you as well, draw it down. Commit to proper alignment here. I know sometimes it's hard to kind of humble the ego. <laughs> to maintain perfect alignment, but that's what we want to do in class. Sometimes that can be the hardest part of yoga, you know, picking up those blocks and using those props instead of reaching our fingers all the way to our toes with that alignment or blocking out our knees for a pose. So try to embrace the blocks. That's how you're going to find growth and really get strong in those tougher poses. Last breath here. Maintain your figure four, but release your bind. Right arm leg is going to go straight. We're going to grab onto our calf, our shin, our ankle, whatever we have here. Pull that leg into your body. Feel your hamstring start to fire up. Pull that glute, that hip. Breathe into those areas of tension. And send your exhales there. Create some space. And then we're going to start to turn on our cores, rocking back and forth. Eventually, we're going to rock all the way into a forward fold, but take your time. Use your core. Feel your core fire up once you lift. See if you can hold over a moment. And then slowly making your way into your forward fold without flopping. Once you get into your forward fold, if you need to lift your ankle above your knee again, take that lift just so we're not locking our foot on top of our knee, putting added pressure on that joint. Reaching our hands for our foot, our ankle, our calf, whatever we can find, nose towards the knee. Cross your ankles, roll over your knees, meet me in a tabletop position. Once you find your tabletop position, I'm gonna give you a few breaths just to move in whatever way feels good. Intuitive movement here, maybe cat cows, warming up through the spine, maybe a child's pose since we skipped it today, We're sitting back, forehead to the mat, arms reached out in front. 
Maybe you should come right onto your knees, bring your toes to the sky, press your hips hard, get into your low back. This is your time for movement, so whatever feels best for you. Don't feel like you have to keep your hands on your feet on the floor. You can always reach an arm up to the sky, open up your shoulder. Whatever you do on one side, just make sure you do it on your other side as well. Give you a couple more breaths here. Start warming up, even out your sides. And then make your way to downward facing dog once you're ready. Use your core to lift your hips high and back, making that mountain shape with your body. And as always, down dog is yours to explore whatever you need here, movement, stillness, take it. Maybe you pedal at your feet, bending one knee and then the other. Maybe you take a nice wide stance, reach an opposite hand for leg. Whatever you need here. Spread your fingers out nice and wide. Engage through your shoulders and your traps. And then come back into your regular downward facing dog. Feet about two fists to hip width distance apart. Inhale, lift your heels nice and high and hold. Find that engagement in your quads and your calves. And exhale, draw your heels as close to the mat as you can get them. Hold for a breath. Inhale, lift your heels and look forward or towards the top of your mat. Exhale, slowly, slowly walk your feet behind your hands. Take each step nice and slow and feel your hamstrings fire up. And once your toes reach behind your hands, I want you to bend your knees, release the hammies. Grab onto opposite elbows, let your head hang. Shift your weight forward and back. There should be no weight in your neck or head. This is all about the decompression of the spine rather than the hamstring stretch. So bend those knees, release your head and neck. Maybe you're interlacing your fingers behind your head. At this time, if you wanna release your hands onto the mat, you can and just start to find some movement, some fluid movement, bending through one knee and then the other. Keeping your feet nice and wide, fingertips on the mat. Inhale, see if you can halfway lift in length. And, and exhale, re-bend your knees and fold. Again like that, inhale, lengthen, straighten out your legs and your arms and your spine. Exhale, fold. Last one, inhale, find length. Exhale, fold. Heels are your feet back together to touch. Big toes touch, sliver of space between your heels, slight bend in your knees. Inhale, rise up as slow as you can. I mean it, really slow. Your chin is staying on your chest, still no weight in your head or neck. Feel your low back. Feel every vertebrae as you rise up. Oh, my back is feeling sore today. Keep your chin on your chest until you get to the top. You're gonna make a big shoulder roll back and then bring your arms out by your sides, palms facing forward, close your eyes. Eyes are closed, arms are engaged, palms facing forward, spread your fingers out wide. Lift all 10 toes off the mat. Ground down with the balls of your feet and your heels. And then see if you can set them down one at a time. Shift weight into your left foot, lift your right foot just a little bit. Shift your weight into your right foot, lift your left foot. Come back to center, shift your weight forward, lift your heels just slightly. Shift your weight back, lift your toes just slightly. And then ground down with the four corners of your feet, feeling solid and balanced, even though we're cutting off our sense of sight. 
Visualize roots growing through the center of your feet down to the core of the earth, keeping you grounded, keeping you centered and stable. We don't need our side here. And then let's make this a more engaged pose. We're super grounded through the four corners of our feet. We're gripping the mat. Let's pull our kneecaps up, engage through our quads. Tuck your tailbone just slightly so your low belly pulls up and in. Squeeze your glutes. Draw your shoulders down your back. Arms stretched out, arms are on. Fingers spread out wide. Keeping your eyes closed, inhale to the Mountain Pose. Bring your arms up overhead, pinkies facing forward, and then draw your shoulders back down. Everything super engaged still. All right, purpose is each of these poses. Sometimes a mountain pose can go quickly and we do it without thinking, but let's be mindful in every single pose. Find the proper engagement. Inhale, blink your eyes open. And exhale, baby back bend, cactus out your arms. Nudge your hips forward. Gaze come slightly up, lift from the chest. Now, if you have a nice gentle cactus, I want you to turn it on. That means draw your elbows towards one another, squeeze your shoulder blades, super engaged in the back side of your body. Try not to dump weight into your low back. Don't worry about the back bend as much as the lift here. Inhale, Tadasana Mountain Pose, arms come high. Exhale, chair plane, sit your weight down and back as you sweep your arms back, palms facing the floor. Triceps are on, draw pinkies towards one another. Sit nice and low. Inhale, drinking bird. Keep your hips low, but lift your heels. Spoiler alert, we have a figure four with a toe squat as one of our peak postures today. So get used to that lift in the heels, pressing ankles forward, stay low in the hips, lower and ever ish. Drop your heels, inhale, at the plot of the left knee lifts out in front of you. Find something to spot wide away. Your drishti, your non-moving focus point. Flex through your lifted toes. Inhale. Exhale, bring your core. Cross your left ankle above your right knee. Bring your hands to heart center. Our third figure four. We did that fold, I forgot. So your weight down and back in your hips. Let this first one be nice and easy. Thumbs to chest, thumbs to sternum. Now we're gonna move up and down in our figure four. We're gonna take little baby squats. Inhale, lift, start to straighten your right leg. Exhale, squat lower. Finding a little more depth each time. Inhale, lift. Keep your eyes on that drishti. Exhale, lower. A little bit lower, last one. Inhale, lift. Exhale, we're gonna lower and hold. Find your edge and your depth. Feel your glutes turn on, feel your hips turn on. Keep that lift in your chest, three breaths here. Last one. Inhale, Ekapada Tadasana, left knee lifts. Take it slow and exhale back to chair plane, left foot steps down, sweeping our arms back. Other side, inhale, right leg out in front of you, Ekapada Tadasana. Find your balance first. Straight line of energy from hip to knee, knee to ankle, ground down to the big toe of your standing foot. Exhale, figure four, right ankle crosses above your left knee. Hands come to heart. Open that right knee, keep pressing down with your left big toe. Take this first one nice and easy, and then we'll find more depth. Inhale, lift, straighten your left leg. Exhale, lower. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. More depth each time. One more, last one like that. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower and hold. Take your time, flex your right toes. Three breaths here. Inhale, I can plant it to right knee lifts. Try not to touch the floor. And exhale, forward fold, hands down to your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands are gonna come to your shins or your thighs or your blocks. Press against your shins or your thighs or your blocks and lengthen through your spine, gazes down at your mat. We're gonna go through Chaturanga super slow on this first one, so option to take it on your knees. 
Exhale, high plank. Plant your palms, set your feet back. Hips stay nice and low. Shoulders, hips, and ankles in alignment. Quads are on. Inhale, shift forward onto your tippy toes. Exhale, mid plank, lower halfway. Elbows stay tight by your ribs, squeezing them in. Grip into your fingertips. Inhale, upward facing dog, lifts to the tops of your feet. Thighs are off the mat, four points of contact here. Exhale, down dog, use your core to lift your hips high and back. Flip back over your feet. High to low plank, that's our chaturanga. I want you to take it in whatever way allows you to keep proper alignment. Okay, so if you need to take it on your knees, that's okay. I'd rather see you on your knees than taking a full push up and letting your shoulders dip lower than your elbows or having your elbows out wide. So you want your elbows in tight, squeezing your ribs. And then when you go to mid plank, a lot of times I see shoulders dipping lower than elbows. I want you to keep a straight line. All right, let's move on. Inhale your right leg high, three legged like dog. Exhale, cross your body, right knee, left tricep, support it to a high plank, and then twist and hold. Maybe they touch for four, three, two, one. Inhale, right leg high, three-legged dog. Exhale, step your right foot to the outside of your right hand for runner's lunge. Take your time, take it slow. Step gently, and then once you step outside of your hand, find any movement that feels good. Maybe before you drop your back knee, you just press into this hip flexor a couple times. Opening up through the hips. We're gonna need our hips today. <laughs> We're gonna need them loose, so let's really warm up into the hips here. Maybe you straighten out your front leg, flex your toes, maybe you drop your back knee, and then straighten out your leg. That might feel a little bit easier to start. Maybe you look over your right shoulder. Any sort of stretch will do here. This is your time for organic movement. All right, let's make our way back into our lounge, or our uh, runner's lounge. So your right foot is to the outside of your hands. And then I want you to step your left hand up just a couple inches. Grounding down with our left hand, inhale, easy twist. Keep your hips low. I don't want your hips to lift with this twist. I want your hips to stay low, and I want your core to twist, your chest to twist. Gaze is up, and exhale, lounge lizard. If you need to creep your hands up just a couple more inches, do it. And then we're gonna roll onto the outside edges of our feet and lower our hips as we reach our fingers back. Now you see why I asked you to walk your hands up. Your shoulders should be directly over your wrist here. Your shoulders shouldn't be jutting out in front of your wrist. Keep a slight bend in your left elbow so you're not locking out that joint. Breathe into the hips. If your hips touch the mat, that's cool. If they hover, that's okay too. Feel the stretch. Breathe into it. Deep into the hips. On your next inhale, lift your hips high, right arm comes high. Exhale, wide-legged forward fold all the way to the other side of the room. From here, I'm gonna give you a few breaths to stretch out in whatever way feels good. These first kind of sun A or B sequences are all about moving into your body and warming up. So whatever you need here, maybe your hands come to the outside of your feet or ankles, maybe you bend through your knees, maybe you grab onto opposite shoulders and do a ragdoll type of thing here. Walk your hands through Whatever feels good. All right, so to bring your hands back out in front of you. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Turn on your quads and your core, bring your arms out to your sides for a T. Everything is turned on here, not locking out our joints, slight bend in the knees. Inhale, rise all the way up to five-pointed star. Heels pivot in and toes are out. Arms are up, palms facing forward. Take an inhale here and exhale, horse. Hands to heart center. Sit your hips low. Nice and low. Bring your hands to your thighs. Inhale, find length. Exhale, twist to the back of your room. Look over your shoulder, twist to your spine. Inhale, come out of your twist just a tiny bit. 
And then exhale, take it deeper. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist to the front. Inhale, come out of your twist, just an inch or two. And then exhale, twist deeper, look over that shoulder. Inhale, back to horse pose, hands to heart. Commit to your squat. And then rise that five-pointed star. We're gonna flow a little bit. So on your exhale, you're gonna bend your knees. Arms are gonna cross out in front of you as you sit low. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, arms cross, sit low. Inhale, rise up. Last one, exhale, arms cross, sit low. And then come straight into warrior two to the front of your room. Have a look down, find your alignment. Front heel should point directly to the arch of the back foot. Front knee is stacked over your ankle. Shoulders over hips. Sometimes I see people leaning forward in a warrior two. Draw it back. Woo, breathe into that quad. Gaze is off your middle finger or out in front of you. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Keep that bend in your front knee. Left arm slides down, right arm comes high and back. Keep the integrity of the bend. I promise we're almost out. Stretch through the right side body and the left side body. So if you're just crunching into that left side, find some lift like you're lifting up and over a barrel. Bend even deeper into your right knee. Inhale. Exhale. Cartel your hands down to your mat. Low lunge. And right away, inhale through your leg a dog. Right leg comes high. All right. Listen carefully. This is going to seem familiar, but it's a little bit different. Exhale. Right knee, left tricep. And then kick your right foot through like fallen star, but you're gonna keep your hips low and your left hand is gonna come out in front of your face. All right, so your hips are low, your right foot is straight out, left hand is in front of your face. Now, inhale, fallen star, lift your hips, reach your fingers over your face. Slight bend in that right elbow, try not to lock out those joints. Breathe here, keep your hips high. And exhale, sit back low, rebend through your left knee, right hand, left hand in front of your face. From here, you're gonna cross your right ankle over your left knee for a figure four. Right ankle over left knee, sometimes that can get tricky. Option to stay here, if you feel like you can move, inhale, hips high, just like we did for Paul and Star. Breathe, and then exhale, down dog, with your figure four. All right. So we're still in our figure four with our down dog. Play around with lifting and lowering your heel. We'll do that again on the other side. So don't worry if it feels tricky. We'll get into it. And then on your in heel, we're gonna shift forward into a high plank, keeping our figure four. Woo! Hips stay low. Core is on. Hold for four, three, two, one, step your right foot back, regular high plank. Inhale, side plank, left hand is your foundation. Right arm reaches high. Keep your hips high. And then see if you can bend your right knee, lift it up towards the sky. If you need to drop onto your bottom knee or forearm, that's okay. Chaturanga in five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, Chaturanga, high to low plank. Inhale, up your facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's get into the other side. Inhale, your left leg high. Exhale, cross your body, left knee, right tricep. Hold for three, two, one. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, runner's lunge. Step your left foot outside of your left hand and then stretch it out. Maybe before you drop your back knee, you press into those left, uh, right hip flexor. So a little bit of a different sequence today. We're going to flow all of our flow <laughs> before core. Go ahead and drop your knee if you did on the other side. Stretch it out a little bit more. So we're getting all of our flowing done before core. And then we're going to do core. And then we're going to work on our figure four peak postures pretty much for the rest of class. If we have time, we'll get a little bit of balance in. And of course, we'll cool it down and stretch it out at the end. But all of the flowing is gonna get done before core. So if you're starting to get tired, find that fire, find that tapas, find your breath, because this is all the flowing we got. 
All right, make your way back into your runner's lunge. Scoot your right hand up. Inhale, easy twist, keeping your hips low. Twisting from the chest and the shoulders and the core. Exhale, lounge lizard. Roll onto the outside edges of your feet. Drop your hips. Reach your fingers back. Big stretch in the hips and the glutes. Breathe. Couple of breaths here. See how low you can get in your hips. Find your depth. Inhale, hips high, fingers high. And exhale, wide legged forward fold. All the way around. Hands come behind your ankles, through your legs, bending through your knee. Maybe you reach one arm and the other high. Second time here to stretch in whatever way feels good. We do have a little bit of twisting going on, so I do recommend a twist, actually. And then make your way back to your wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen. Bring your arms out to a T. Rise up, use your core as you rise up to five-pointed star. Inhale. Exhale, horse, hands down to heart. We're gonna come straight into those flowy arm circles. Inhale, straighten out your legs, arms come out in front. Cross them in front of you, exhale, sit low. Inhale, lift. Exhale, sit low. Last one, inhale, lift. Exhale, hit low. And then straight into our warrior two. Left knee is bent, stacked over the ankle. Have a look down, find your alignment, and then take your gaze out in front of you. Breathe into this quad. Open into the hip. Inhale, left arm high, right arm down. Reverse your warrior. Keep the bend in the front knee. Keep that right hip drop down, hips are square. Bend a little bit deeper, inhale. Exhale, curl your hands down to your mat, low lunge, pivot your back toes. Inhale, three-legged dog, left leg high. All right, doing that weird transition. Exhale, left knee, right tricep. And then we're gonna send our left leg through. Bend our right knee, hips low, right hand in front of your face. So kind of like a fall and start, but keeping our hips low. Inhale, fall and start proper. Hips high, fingers reach forward. Hold here, keep those hips high. Breathe. And exhale, sit low, hand in front of your face. Now see if you can cross your left ankle over your right knee, figure four. Option to stay right here, this is enough. Option to lift your hips high. This is a tough one, hold for three, two, one. Down dog with your figure four. Right hand comes down to the mat. Left leg stays cross over your right. Lift and lower your right heel. And then shift forward into high plank. Keeping your hips low, pressing your fingertips so your wrists don't start to hurt. For three, two, one, high plank proper. Step your left foot back. Inhale, side plank. Left arm lifts, right hand is the foundation. Maybe you drop your knee or your forearm if you did on the other side. And then lift this left knee high, keep your hips high. Hold for four, chaturanga in three, two, one, chaturanga, high to low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale through your nose, fill up. Open all the exhale, release. One more flow, and then we're done flowing. Inhale, let your heels look forward. Exhale, travel to the top of your mat. Forward cold, keeping a slight bend in your knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive up to the top and mountain pose. So arms come out to your sides, and then up above your head. Exhale, baby back then, have to sit out. Inhale, back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Exhale, chair plane, so your hips low, just keep your arms back. Inhale, drinking bird, lift your heels. Sit low in your hips for a breath. Exhale, drop your heels. Inhale, left leg lifts, Akapata Tadasana. Exhale, figure four. Cross your leg over your knee, hands to heart. Now from here, we're gonna find a twist. 
So you're looking right. Your left elbow is gonna come into your left foot. Not here for long, breathe. If you fall out, come back in. Just through your breaths. Inhale, back to Agapadasana. See if you can do it without touching the floor. Take it slow and controlled. Exhale, chair plane. Left foot steps down, sweep your arms back. Inhale, right arm high, right leg high. And exhale, figure four. Ready, both crosses over the knee. Take your time. When you're ready, let's find our twist, twisting to the left. See if you can hook your right elbow into your foot. Sit low. Use that resistance to twist deeper. Three breaths. Inhale, I can pause it off, my right knee lifts. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga, hop or step it back, flow through it. Inhale, upper facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Floor and straight into some B. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, runner's lunge. Right foot steps to the outside of your right hand. Inhale, easy twist, left arm high. Exhale, lounge lizard, hips low, fingers reach back. Inhale, hips high, fingers high. Exhale, wide legged forward fold. Inhale, arms out to a T, halfway lift. Rise all the way up to five point star, heels and toes out. Exhale, horse, hands to heart, sit down low. Adding on here, inhale, lift your heels, toe squat. Pulse for eight, shh, shh. For five, four, three, two, one, drop your heels, inhale, five-pointed star. Cross your arms out in front of you, exhale, squat. Inhale, lift, exhale, squat. Last one, inhale, lift, exhale, squat, straight into warrior two. Find your proper alignment, and then inhale, reverse your warrior, right arm high, left arm low. Exhale, crawl your hands down to your mat, low lunge. Inhale, three-legged dog, straight up, right leg high. Exhale, cross your body, shoot your right foot through. Hips low, left hand in front of your face. Inhale, hips high, reach your fingers forward. Ball star proper. Exhale, sit low, hand in front of your face. Find your figure four. Right ankle crosses over your left knee. Inhale, hips high, arms reach back, adding on here. We're gonna come into a side plank facing the other side with our figure four. Left hand is gonna come down to the mat, take it slow. Rolling over our left foot. Right arm is gonna reach higher. Still in our figure four. Okay. Hold for four, three, two, one. Take your chaturanga high to low plank with your figure four. When you come into upper facing dog, shoot that foot out. Exhale, down dog. Last side, we get a break. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, runner's lunge. Step your foot to the outside of your hand. Inhale, easy twist, left arm high. Exhale, lounge lizard, roll onto the outside edge. Inhale, hips high, arms high. Exhale, wide legged forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, arms to a T, rise all the way up to five pointed star, heels in, toes up. Exhale, horse, hands to heart, squat down low. Lift your heels, toe squat, pulse, pulse. Six, five, four. Three, two, one, drop your heels, sit low, inhale, five point and star, cross your arms in front of you and sit low, exhale. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Last one, inhale, lift, exhale, lower, straight into our warrior two. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Right arm down, left arm high. Exhale, crawl your hands down to your mat, low lunge. Inhale, three-legged dog, left leg high. Exhale, cross your body. Left knee, right tricep. And then send that left foot through. Hips are low, hands in front of your face. Inhale, palms are proper, hips high. Fingers reach forward. Exhale, hips low. Hand in front of your face. Find your figure four. If you feel okay here, lift your hips. Extend your arm. Coming straight into our side plank, other side. Keep your figure four, right hand comes down to the mat. Flipping to our other side, left arm is high. Keep your hips high, you got this. Woo! All right, we're gonna take our chaturanga, oops, sometimes we fall, <laughs> with our figure four. Left hand down to the mat, find high to low plank with your figure four. 
Shoot your left foot out. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Draw to your knees. Wipe some sweat. Have some water. Whew. How are you guys feeling out there? <sighs> I'm dripping sweat. That's a good one, right? It's funky. That uh, fall and start with the uh, figure four. It's a little weird. Something new. All right, we are done flowing. So let's get into just a little bit of core, fire our core up, and then we will find our peak posture. And our peak postures are something that I'm still working on. So if you don't have them perfectly, I don't expect you to, because I don't have them perfectly either. <laughs> so we're gonna work towards them and see where we get. All right, come on to your back. You're never gonna guess what we're doing. Figure four sit-ups. I think this is like our sixth variation of figure four. Right foot crosses over your left knee. Hands behind your head, elbows are out wide. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, lift your legs and take a crunch. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift. Big open mouth exhales as you lift. Last five. Last two. One and hold, squeeze for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Other side. Left ankle crosses over your right knee, arms out wide. Inhale, exhale, crunch. Lower, crunch. Try to keep your elbows wide, lifting your shoulders towards your legs, getting that little lift in the lower abdominals. Here for 10, nine, Hold high in two, one and hold, squeeze here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, full body stretch. Woo. Grab one of your blocks, we have one more exercise. And if you don't have blocks, just do this, pretend you have a block or if you have a book or something that will work. Block comes on your shins in a reverse tabletop with our legs here, 90 degree angle. Hands behind our head, shoulders are gonna lift off the mat. On your inhale, you're gonna send your legs long, straighten them out. Exhale, you're gonna crunch and grab your block. Inhale, arms up over heads and your legs long. Crunch with your block. Woo, this one burns, I know. We have five more. Lengthen, crunch, four, Three, two, one. Little body stretch. Puff up your chest, lift your lower back or upper back off the mat. Stretch to that front side of your body. In fact, let's take a quick restorative bridge. Bend your knees, press into your heels, lift your hip. Slide your block underneath your hips, so very, very low, just above your butt. And it should be perpendicular with your spine, a level one or level two. Send your legs out long and your arms up overhead. Stretch to the front side of your core, or your psoas, your lower back. Come into your breath. Come into those long breaths. Maybe close your eyes and reconnect to the intention that you set in the beginning of class. It's always important to come into our attentions before these peak postures. These peak postures can be tough. Sometimes we're not very good. <laughs> Sometimes we're not very experienced. Sometimes it's something we need to grow towards. So commit to being kind to yourself no matter where you're at in these inversions or peak postures. 
Too much time in growth. All right, so just bend your knees. Bring your hands down to your block. Let your hip slide out, block under, out, underneath, out from underneath you. Bring your knees into your chest and rock and roll into a seat. All right. You guys ready to get inverted? All right, we have a couple options. I think we'll do the toe squat first and then the inversion second. So, toe squat is like my arch nemesis. <laughs> I don't know what it is about this pose, but I've been working on it for years and I still just can't quite get it. But I'm still gonna work on it. So, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna grab your blocks. Ooh. Blocks are gonna come to their highest level out by your sides. We'll start with our right foot cross over our left. So coming into a figure four, you're gonna sit low and bring your hands to your blocks. Proper figure four, hands come to your blocks. You're gonna lift up onto your toes, lift your heel, press your ankles forward, and then start to squat down. Hands are still on our blocks by our sides. Keeping that lift in the heel, pressing the ankle forward. Spot something out in front of you. And then maybe bring one hand to heart center. Maybe bring the other hand to heart center. Keep the lift in the heel. Lengthen through your spine. Woo. Give it a couple tries. If you wobble out, I'm there, right there with you with those wobbles. Woo. All right. And if you want to keep trying on that leg, keep trying. Otherwise, we're going to try the other side. So blocks out to your sides. Left ankle crosses over the right knee. Finding our figure four. And then we're gonna squat down low towards our blocks. Hands come to the blocks. Lift that heel, come into a toe squat. And then draw off your hips towards your heel. Find your heel. Find your balance. Keep your heel lifted. Maybe one hand comes to heart. Maybe the other hand comes to the heart. Find that drishti. If you fall out, that's all right. I'm falling too. All right, once you get both sides, shake it off. If you have a towel, wipe down your triceps because we're getting into inversions. All right. So, if you want to keep working on toe squat, you can totally keep working on toe squat. If you want to add or move on to our second inversion, it's a flying figure four. So, same thing. And if you want to put your hands on blocks here, you can. I find that it's easier to get into the version with blocks, but it's harder to hold in blocks. So, I'm going to ditch the blocks. So, you do whatever you want to do here. Crossing right, come to the back of your mat first. Crossing our right ankle above our left knee. Squatting down into our figure four. And then first you're just gonna come into a forward fold. All right, so eventually this foot here, this right foot is gonna hook around this tricep. So first you're gonna walk your hands out and you're gonna bend your arms deep like chaturanga, shift your weight forward, knee comes onto the tricep, hook, toes hook around your other tricep here. And then maybe you lift those left toes off the mat, keep them pointed. Really gripping into all 10 fingers so it's not just in your wrist here. Find some lift. All right, work on that. Take a couple breaths. And then we're gonna get into the other side. And of course, you can always pause this video if you wanna spend a little bit more time working on each inversion. I basically just wanna show you where to go so you have some time to keep working on whichever you choose. Other side, always gotta get into the hard side. Left leg over, right, sit down low. Bring your hands down to the floor. You're gonna hook the left toes around the tricep. You can do it now, or the bicep rather. Or you can walk your hands out. Wait till you get your knee on your other tricep, or tricep for lifting. Maybe you stay here, toes on the mat. Maybe they lift just for a second or two, for a long time, whatever you got. All right, keep it going. <laughs> All 
And I know we have some super advanced yogis out there at the gym. So for you guys, I'm gonna show you something crazy. Fire five legs. It's something that I can do on one side, kind of, but not the other side. So it's basically, you know how you do a crow and then a side crow? It's basically like that, but with our figure four. So our flying figure four, like we just did, but twisting. So sometimes I can do this, sometimes I can't. We're gonna see how it goes, but I wanna show you how to get into it so it can be something that you can work on. All right. So for this one, I like to switch to the long side of my mat. And then same thing, crossing ankle over knee. We're kind of putting both together. So we're coming down to our squat here. So you're in a figure four, hands towards the mat. Your left heel is lifted, right ankle cross over the left. Now we're gonna walk our hands over to the left. See where I'm going with this? You're gonna eventually get this right foot on this left tricep. So I put a block in front just in case I face plant. I can kind of help. So you're gonna plant your palms, getting your foot up onto that tricep. Plant your palms, switch to the side, and then maybe you lift that left foot off the mat. You can put your block under your shoulders or your face to help out. And that's, I believe it's called firefly. I don't know why that's not quite sounding right in my head right now. Uh, look this up. <laughs> but that's your firefly pose. Try it on one side, try it on the other. Give you a couple of breaths here. Pause if you need to keep trying. And then I'm gonna meet you back in downward raising dog for our cool down. Alrighty. Let's make our way back into downward facing dog. Let's cool it down. Inhale, right leg high, three legged dog. Exhale, half pigeon. Right leg forward, right foot to your left hand, back leg long, toes untucked. This should feel really good after all of that hip work that we've done today. If you're feeling good right here, stay right here. If you want to take the fold into sleeping pigeon, fold over your shin, square your hips and shoulders, forehead down to the mat. Breathe here. Super deep hip stretch all through all that hip work. Find some gratitude for this last hour. Gratitude to yourself, honoring yourself for making it to your mat today, to creating the for creating the space to step up here, to send it, to work on your body and your breath and your spirit and really go for these tough poses, these tough transitions. Learn something new, try something funky, even if it's not perfect. Honor your falls, honor your wobbles. And that's how we evolve, it's how we grow. Last few breaths here. And then inhale, start to lift your chest. Plant your palms, tuck your back toes, lift your back leg. Three-legged dog, right leg comes high. Bend your knee, take some circles in one direction and in the other. And then option to flip your dog if that's in your practice and you're feeling like another back bend. Option to just come back to downward facing dog. Once you flip your dog and come back around, if that's what you're doing, inhale your left leg high, feel like a dog. And exhale, half fidget. Left foot towards your left right hand. Back leg long, toes untucked, fingertips out in front of you. Option to stay here if you feel ready for a fold over that shin and calf. Squared hips and shoulders. Forehead can come down to your block, your mat, whatever you like. Reconnect your intention. Notice if you set it and forget it, or if you used it as your mantra, you came back to it throughout class. 
If this is your first time coming back to it, breathe life into it. Do some self-reflection. Notice where your head space is at throughout class. Notice what your perspective looks like. And when you're ready, inhale, lift your chest, plant your palms, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, three-legged dog, center your left leg high. Bend your knee, open up your hip, take those big circles. If you wanna flip your dog here, if you did it on the other side, flip your dog here. And then make your way back to downward facing dog, drop your knees. Sit into one of your hips, come onto your back. Take any final stretches that feel good. You already did a lot of twisting, but if you want another supine twist, a plow pose, a back bend, a happy baby, um, get into it. Find whatever you need. I'm gonna set up the bowls, give you a little sand bath for your savasana. Make your way into Spasana if you're not already there. Close your eyes. Skip this song. I think I'm on a waste transmission if you are too. Skip it to our Spasana song. And then come back to Spasana on your back. Close your eyes. Take a big inhale through your nose. Fill up. Open mouth, exhale, sink into your mat. <sighs> Disengage everything. Shavasana is corpse pose, dead man's pose. Be like a dead man. Be dead weight. A dead man who's still breathing. <laughs> Relax through your brows, your forehead. Let your tongue fall from the roof of your mouth and hinge your jaw. Relax through your face, your jaw, your neck, your shoulders. Feel this relaxed flow of energy running down your body from your shoulders to your arms, your biceps, down around your elbows, into your forearms, and your wrists, and your fingertips. Maybe you start to feel a pulsing sensation in your fingertips, or a vibration, a tingling. Fill your chest and your belly with that relaxed sensation, send it down your low back, your glutes. If there's any engagement happening, let it go. As you send that sensation down around your hips, your quads, let it relax each muscle along the way. Send it around your knees and your shins and your calves. Let it circle around your ankles and flow through the soles of your feet and into your toes until you're filled with this light, this warmth, this quiet space of mind and body, absolutely no engagement happening, you're dead weight on your mat. I'm gonna play a little bit of the bowls and I'm gonna leave you here in Savasana today. So relax on into it.
yogis, I'm gonna leave you here and just fast tonight today. And I want you to see if you can take another 10 or 20 breaths once I stop talking, absorbing the stillness, the quietness. This is where the healing comes into yoga. Let the stillness kind of wash over your body. See if you can take another 10, 20 breaths. As always, it's my honor and my passion to guide you through this movement. So thank you for showing up virtually, for working through the movement with me. Of course, if you have any feedback or suggestions, I'd love to hear it. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, how you're doing in those peak postures. Take those final breaths and I will see you on your mat soon. Namaste.